like she's in the intervention room. So yeah, so cute. Okay. Okay. Because she's reviewing or her husband. Because on the butt, you haven't heard this? How have you not heard this? And all the this and all those things. They would review things on Amazon. And so they invited him to be a part of Hi, can you hear me, Danielle? Like secret you. Okay, great. Let me turn that all the way up. Okay. Well, I'm constantly. Doing that. constantly. Welcome. Welcome. Right, let me give this to Dan. So did we decide that last time that this was? Oh, maybe I shouldn't sit this us. side. Maybe my head. Mm -hmm. How? How is your view? All right. It's, I can see the monitor. Good. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to turn our monitor off because we're, we're that's off. fine. Oh, oh, we're that's totally fine. fine. I think we set it up so there would be. Right. Yeah, I'll watch the chat. No, I'll watch the chat. I want to sit here. I'll watch some No, no, I can sit here. I heard that Joelle does not buy it. She's hard to have usually. I'm going to sit here. I do. I do. I work from home now. You've heard that 93 8% of the time. So, you know, it's a rare one. I was actually in my pajamas until about an hour You are my people. Wait, you're going to do it today. Oh, wait, your class. I know. I want to go. Okay, so maybe they're doing it. But and everything. So they they came came and water, 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 water. Water. The only difference with the one of them is caffeinated. If that the purple is not. Well, I didn't want to. Purple is great. That's what I. That's what I told her. I think Sheree knows all about that kind of stuff. I think you do sign it somewhere. I don't know. Evelina brought her the cash box. So this was the it without She gave it to me. You. Okay. And did you sign it and come to Well, I asked her and she said, have Jen do it. I just so, have oh, it. That's what Jen did. I'm impressed that all of your checks and balances are there. Me too. It's not though. It's an great box. We try, but. Well, it's a Okay. See, Dora. I'm fine. You might need to know about it. It's, it's always open. It's always open in a window. This is me. Oh, I'm not connected to it. I need to do that. Okay. Okay. Did you want to drink or something? How old are your kids? First grade, so they need some help, and the first that person. No, I do. I have a fourth grader. Um, she's actually my one who brought me to connecting with her. Okay. Um, she has she medically complex. Um, and then I have a seventh person. Okay. Um, I was actually saying earlier that I know a good friend of mine who. I was here during yeah. her husband's residency. Mm -hmm. um, her kids came to Ottawa, so the Burns drums. Oh, 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 Kayla. Everyone here knows Kayla. Right, everyone, <laughs> everyone knows Kayla. Burns yeah. drums. Okay, most people know Kayla Burns yeah, that's, that's my connection to Ottawa is Kayla. So, um, actually, I'm the reason she moved to Shaker Heights when they moved here because awesome. her husband had been. Um, trained under my sister. My sister's a general pediatrician up in Michigan and through Michigan State, she does a lot of the med school training. Um, and when the, he got assigned to UH, they were looking for somewhere safe to live that was close to the hospital. 
<laughs> that would be a good one. So, yeah, they're doing great in Kalamazoo area, though. Okay. Now he's working at the hospital. My sister did her residency. Oh, wow. One of the moms so helping with OLP yeah. downstairs is really close to Kayla. I yeah. I went up and visited her. Awesome. Okay. To give Kelly a plug, she does the card in my yard. Oh, here. cool. Yeah. My uh, neighbor, we just, we did a very last minute card in my yard. Um, she was adopting her son and the date was hit or miss on what day it was oh, going to be. Yeah. And we finally, she finally nailed it down and she's like, I feel like I should have done something. It's literally yeah. the night before as we're like reaching out and they <laughs> defeated and got her yard card. He was so excited the next morning when he woke up and saw it. That's a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cheers, Charlie. Yeah, go ahead. Get started. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, we have, huh? I said you'll have to be real. I know, to get me on the map from the okay. for the begin with. So I'll try some screaming. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, we're glad you could make it. We've got a couple of great speakers who come today to um, fill us in on some really helpful information. Um, we have um, Jody. I'm not. I keep wanting to call you Jody. I'm sorry. Joellen um, from Connecting with Kids, and she's going to tell us about that organization. And um, Heather Weingart, our Board of Education liaison. Um, who's going to tell us um, some details about the acceleration of the facilities plan. Um, so we're just going to run through some really brief usual business and um, get to the meat of our program. Um, so first we were going to um, go through and thank folks for all the great things that have happened since we last met. Um, the snack cart is rolling every month, doing a great job. Um, Tori Mateo, Emma, Emma Visnick. Um, we had the first and second grade volunteers um, come out and help. And one or the other, I forget which one, I actually pushed the cart. And it's just such a fun thing to be able to bring with some joy through you know, the middle of the day. We um, share snacks and coffee and some drinks and stuff with um, all the staff. and. Uh, it's well like and funded um we had uh, our service project day um, for mlk on the 12th and uh, meals for wheels we did uh, placemats for them and you got a really nice text from someone we did we sent it to yeah. dora um the mills on wheel director that's okay. You can still do it. Now. I do. Yeah. The Mills on Real director did say that they were much loved. Some of the um, recipients saved them, hung them on the wall. They were planning on using some more placemats that they had at a fundraising dinner they had coming up. So that went over really, really well. Mm -hmm. It's a great thing. So thank you. Uh, the kids had a real good time with Kindness Week. We had the um, different days, different shirts, different things that we were doing. We did. Um, Kindness Day, some sort of a kind message on your shirt. We did, um, what's the day? Was the, oh yeah, the decades. That's right. That was so fun. Um, Mrs. Thornton and her Rosie the Riveter costume. I love that. Um, and we had a 100 day celebration where all of the kids got their free 100 near t shirt. Um, and that worked out really well. We did, well, Megan did a really nice Domino's. <laughs> oh, that was that video. was <laughs> no, that was a lot of people with all of the um, stuff that was collected. Um, you probably saw in the e news um, that we collected more than five hundred pieces of um, food items to donate. Um, so you know they should be really proud of of what they accomplished. Um, but so uh, thank you to um, Amy. Um, Brodsky and all the teachers and staff who pulled together the MLK service day. I actually have, I take no oh, credit. Well, I it's a service day, so you want to know. Okay. okay <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, Centennial Celebrations, um, I know Kelly Taylor did a lot, um, Brooke did a lot, um, Mr. Dan helped take an all-school picture. Um, I still have to take a look at that. He gave me access to 
to give you access to oh, the I just yet. got the folder this morning. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll put um he edited a couple, made them really nice. Okay. I'll put one in um the family newsletter and I'll also send it out on Seesaw. Awesome. So that way you can just tap on it with your phone and save it. The all school picture is really um preschool joined us and it just it came out really, really nice and all the staff lined up along the back and it kind of goes from preschool up to fourth grade and it just looks so nice to just have everybody in that gym together like that in the same t-shirt yes, which yeah. was a great idea that you guys came up with because I was totally trusting that oh just send it home don't wear it and <laughs> it wouldn't have looked as nice as it did like every single person has on the red t-shirt looks so nice which is a great segue into we do still have some shirts <laughs> Um, if anybody wants extras, if there's a sibling that's an Onaway alumni that wants one, um, there's a link in the e-news, or you can reach out to Christy Lease or me or Cherie, and we'll look into it. And yeah, it's limited it stuff, so be aware that you know, it's not all sizes will be available. And once it's gone, it's gone. So yeah, we're not reordering. Um, um, but you know, thanks to Chrissy for, for doing that. Um, she took that on a last minute um auto head and sign. Um so those are our thank yous for all the stuff that's been happening. We did have a meeting last month as planned, so we had a bunch of stuff between them then and now. Um upcoming events. Yeah, we can just pop through those super quickly because they're usually all listed in the e-news and it yeah. should be on district calendars. Um this Friday, is that this Friday? Yeah. Yes, yeah. this Friday is a Zoom day, which we think is brilliant. So party, uh, party on the bottom, business on the top, or as I told my kid, regular clothes and pajama bottoms. But I think it'll be, they can have fun with it. Um, and it's easy for parents. Um, on a waste gate is this Sunday. It is a very much loved event. Um, come, it is free. The skate rental's free too, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it's all free. And then, as you heard, coming up, open. oh, concessions will be open, but yeah. not free. Not free. Yeah. Um, OLT is coming up. If you haven't already gotten your tickets, you're probably out of luck. Um, but send in your form just in case. We got a huge, huge, huge response back today. Um, I don't know what the exact numbers were um, on that. And then right now, next month, we have scheduled an exec board meeting of which everyone is still always welcome to attend. And then uh, towards the end of March, we will have a spirit day party where PTO will provide the snacks like we did before winter break. Um, and if anybody has any pressing PTO questions, they are welcome to ask them now or hold them until after um, our guests have spoken or reach out to Shri and I directly. I don't wanna take up too much time when we have such great speakers here. Um, so without further ado, do you have anything else, Shereen? Then I would love to turn it over to Miss Joellen, who was gracious enough to come and talk to us about connecting for kids. Um, do you want me to go up there so that people on Zoom can? Do you want me to take it down? That it doesn't matter. I can, I think it's, it's I'll be fine, yeah, Heather. I'll it's be fine. fine in front yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay. Pretty relaxed. So, um, as I mentioned, I'm Joellen. And on, I work oops, sorry, um, with Connecting for Kids. And we are, have any of you heard of us? First of all, yep. well, we're well, kind of new to the east side. So, <laughs> oh, sure. do you get our emails? So, you know, awesome, awesome, awesome. So, we are a small nonprofit that we started over in the Westlake area um, about 13 years ago. Which I just realized I should have one more thing in my break that I want to pass up to you guys. Um, oops. And what we are is we're really there for families who have any sort of concern. Print them off and not bring them. Um, about their child. So, but that's all right. Um, so any sort of concern about their child. So if you look at the back of that flyer I just gave you, there is a list of concerns on there. So you kind of look it over, and if there's any one concern on there that you may have had, just kind of lift a hand. Like, I will tell you, <laughs> I could, if we were gonna do this by fingers, which when I have more time, that's why I do, I read through them all and like do fingers. I am a two-hander <laughs> between my two kids. Like I have had multiple 
of these concerns about my kiddos. So a little bit about me. I have two kids. I have a just turned 13 last week year old um, who's in seventh grade. And I have a 10 year old who is in fourth grade. And my 10 year old is my one who brought me to connecting for kids originally. So I first um, reached out to CFK. Um, Marin, my daughter, has had three open heart surgeries. She has a feeding tube. She has global delays, cognitively, physically, first motor, fine motor delays, all of the above. If you were all to see her today, you would have no idea, no clue whatsoever. You would think she was probably six or seven, not almost 11. Um, but you would absolutely, you would have no idea. She looks like your typical kid. Okay. But she didn't walk until she was four, three and a half. She didn't talk till she was four and a half. Um, she didn't eat by mouth until last year. Um, so, you know, she's had a lot of delays. And when she was little, we were doing the PT, the OT, the speech therapy. I felt like I was always at a doctor's office or a therapist's office, but yet we were making small progress. I kept thinking there has to be something more. Okay, there has to be something else to truly get her. And I also, as a parent, like I didn't know a lot of other parents who had a child who was medically complex as Mary was. Um, and so I was I was feeling kind of alone, right? Like, like first of all, parenting's hard. Let's just say that to begin with. Add in some extra needs, it's a whole nother level. Okay. So I had heard about, actually, if you open your first picture, I had heard about an upcoming resource fair that Connecting for Kids was doing over in Rocky River. And so I decided I'm going to sign up for that resource fair. I'm going to go check it out. In the meantime, while I was on the website, I learned that they also had this thing called Music Therapy and More. And it was specifically for kids who are 18 months to six years old. And it was an intro to music therapy. I'm like, well, Erin loves music. Like she's always, a, that's her calming thing. That's what, you know, makes, we can get her to actually do her therapy if there's music playing. We can like, let's give it a try, right? So I went to one of the music therapies with her and um, I will tell you, it was honestly life-changing for us. Um, at the time, I didn't realize that, you know, at the time I just was like, well, that was fun. You know, now in hindsight, it was a huge moment for us. So she um, loved it. She, we, I'd been taking her to typical library stuff, you know, um, and we kind of get some looks because she was three and a half, four, wasn't walking, wasn't talking. She would just kind of sit there and bop, or we'd have her feeding tube attached and then we'd get a lot of looks. Um, and it was such a great welcoming place that, you know, everyone there had a concern about the kid. Like I knew no one was staring at us. No one, did, no one cared that she was crawling around instead of walking. Um, and it was just for me, it was that moment of like, wow, I found my people, right? Um, for her, um, it made us realize like, oh, wait a second, maybe we should be utilizing music a little bit more with her. So fast forward a couple months and I went to what is now called the Western Cuyahoga County Resource Fair. It was called the Meet and Greet back in eight years ago. Um, and I ended up finding so many resources there for her. I actually enrolled her into music therapy. Um, and we did that all through the pandemic also. Um, we tried for years to get her to remember our phone number and address and she couldn't. She can tell it to you now, but only if she sings it to Farah Jaka. <laughs> Both of them have to be sung to Farah Jaka. Our music therapist taught her both of those things in a 20 minute session. That I had been working on her, working with her for I mean, for years. So, um, it was just a great thing when she hit kindergarten. That's when my current role came, oh, happened to come open, and I decided, oh, I could maybe make this work. I never planned on being a stay-at-home mom. We only went and saw doctors. Um, so that's how I ended up working for CFA. So I've been here now almost six years, and I actually run all of our resource fairs. So that's my big role. So since I started, we've added two more resource fairs. You can see in here, um, the one that makes the most sense for you guys is actually coming up next Saturday, the second at Tri-C East. And at that, we actually have 73 tables of in-person local resources 
we really focus on academic, mental health, and disability related resources. So any camps who are there are gonna be camps that are specific for kids with ADHD, kids with autism kids with a physical disability, or uh, maybe they need some, we have lots of ESY style camps there. Uh, we have lots of tutors, lots of dyslexia related resources. That's that in a nutshell. Um, so that was at that front page, that's that resources thing you see there at the front. I'm kind of going through, I'm gonna be flipping back and forth here for you on what we do. So we provide those resources for families. That's one way. Another way is on our website. There's a whole list of resources on there. Open it up to the middle section there and you'll see where it says workshops, care and support, speaker series, and ask us. This is kind of the combination of all three of those, those resources, support, and community. So our workshops, which I can grab this one, um, are all things that are for parents that you leave with something tangible, okay? So for example, the behavior chats, you actually leave with a behavior toolkit to help you deal with whatever behavior you're working on in your home. Um, you know, we obviously have some different topics there. The one that I wanna talk about a little bit more is the how to communicate effectively with school. This is actually one that we partner um, with different school districts on as well. We are doing that one at Lakewood Public Library. Um, but that's something where the the Shaker parent mentor, did you guys just get a new parent mentor? Yes. Okay. Um, she's not just ours. Right, from the Shaker yeah. district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought so. My emails were bouncing and then all of a sudden I Googled. I'm like, and I'm so sorry, I can't think of her name right now. It's there something um I just she wrote it in my she, herself um earlier in the year. I plan on reaching out to her because I would love to partner with her and give and give this option to Shaker families. So yeah. it's a communication binder. So one of the things that we always talk about when families come to us with a good school related concern is, you know, do you and your school have open and honest communication that's not offensive? Okay, because that's one of the things we want to take that everyone's on the same page. Whether you feel like they are or not, everyone wants to see your child succeed. So this is something we offer. It's a communication binder where we actually have a grant. These are all provided. Um, and we can come in and then we go through different topics of, you know, how to document your conversations, how to store your data sheets, all of that type of thing. So, so we have also a face liaison, okay. a family engagement uh, person on our staff. Awesome. I would love and to be. I'll give you a card when we're we done. We do a lot of what you're describing yeah. in small sessions here during the school day for family. That's awesome. So that would be something that we could do here yeah. on campus. Like Wonderful. On, in, at our building. That would be great because that's something that we offer. Everything we do with Connecting for Kids, by the way, I kind of forgot to let this card out. It's free. Mm -hmm. It's all free. Um, so like this type of thing is grant funded um, so that we can provide the binders and everything like that. Um, but I would love to. I would love to know. I don't get with that. Well, and Sarah and I had talked about even our just our PTO yep. hosting. Our yep. plan was to right to see if we have interest in to host a communications binder workshop. Yeah. So if that is sure. something, we have um, Carla Fitch on our staff is typically the one who leads those. Mm -hmm. um, she has she's that like amazing person who has multiple master's degrees and like things that don't relate to each other. Um, <laughs> Her so she puts her social work hat on for this one, and she does just such a great, great job with it. That's so, um, if that's something you're interested in, now we can talk more and see. So, um, also in here are share and supports. So those are facilitated. We always have a counselor at them, a, a mental health counselor, to kind of facilitate in case something hits a little deep. Um, you can kind of go off and talk with them maybe one or nine, one a little bit more. Um, my favorite one that we did for share and support was it was simply parenting is hard. It was, we had 80 parents in this room, okay? <laughs> like, yes, it is. Yes. And it, they had different concerns, you know? Some were going through a divorce and their nine-year-old punched a hole through their wall because they weren't handling that divorce well, right? Others were in a situation like I had been, where they had a child with a diagnosis and were feeling alone, you know, and it was so great to bring all these people together 
and realize, A, they're not alone and like recognize that, yes, parenting is hard. Like, I don't remember my parents feeling like the way I am. They just hit it well, probably. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then the other one are our speaker series is. So those are where we have a local professional on a certain topic come in and talk about it. Um, the speaker series is and some of those workshops we actually record. Um, we ask par parents to hold their questions to the end. Mm -hmm. They forget and they ask their question. Um, we actually voice over them so that all of our spaces are 100% safe for parents to ask whatever question. Um, and then we turn them into podcasts and we put those on. So like we just did a whole one on executive functioning. And this is our latest podcast that just went up and how much that can impact um, your school day, especially if you have a kiddo with ADHD. Um, my best friend was like, I can't go to that one. And my, I so need to. And I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> yep, you do. You need to go. Um, but she was so excited that was a podcast. So um, the one, the cool thing about all these, you'll notice they're um, all at local libraries. Closest library right now to you guys is Heights Library. Um, working with Shaker Heights to hopefully eventually get in there too. But what we found is that families, it doesn't matter race, um, socioeconomic background, religion, everyone's comfortable in the library. So that's a big part of it. Um, the last thing on this page here is the Ask Us. So that is, say you have a concern. Um, we just had someone reach out to us about trying to remember what it was in our Facebook group. It was about um, oh specific fi finding specific funding for their child's disability. And it was one of those things where it's like, this is probably a little bit more than like, we need some more ant, you know, it's talking through this a little bit more. Get some more information before we can tell you just in a Facebook feed what is out there. Um, but that's something that will help with is you can set up a one-on-one -on -one with one of our family resource specialists. Once again, it's free. And they'll kind of ask you some questions and then get you the right information. Um, this last section here, so this is part of that community and support again. These are things, so that middle section is all about the adults, right? It's just the adults going, free child care is happening in a different part of the library. The last page here are things that your kiddos go with you to. So these are the ones like that music therapy and more that I took my daughter to. These are the things that our kids feel are all about them, okay? Um, however, they uh, our goal is really to use that time to educate the parents. You know, for that music therapy one, it's how to use music in your home. They gave us a sheet. They gave us, it, that day happened to be all about um, places in your community. So she can still, even though she was nonverbal when we were there, she can still sing some of the little songs that we learned um, almost eight years ago. So it's kind of crazy, but like it sticks that much. So that is us in a nutshell. We do send out um, a weekly, or well, not weekly, every other week email. And that was why I went to go in my bag to grab the little forms out. Um, but I forgot to grab them. But if you are interested in getting the email, I can send around a piece of paper and you can just give me your name, email, phone number if you want to share that with Jen, right? Um, and I'm happy to get you on our email list. So any questions? I feel like I rushed through that so much. I have questions. Yeah. Can you partner at the district level? We can, yeah, we can a little. Um, so one of the things actually I we had just been emailing Shaker's administration this fall. I would love to. We actually send these home with families, uh pre K through fifth grade families. We would love, love, love. So I was trying to remember. So we we sent this home in my former district. Oh, did you bring it for um almost like Falls Early Public yeah. Center? Our special yeah. equipment. And I I don't I didn't remember it being at the library. So you must have partnered with them on something because we did music therapy. Oh, did one of our pre schoolers and it was amazing. Um, but our social worker would reference these with her newsletters so that families knew. So when do you publish this? Because yeah. this would be a great thing for me. If I, yep. and I can people knew I had time, what to look forward yep. to, we could say, 
oh, coming up next month would be a great fit at Heights Library. So I'll make sure I get you added to my email. Let's okay. start. So we have two different email things that for background here. We have one that's for parents and then one for educators and professionals okay. that will link you so that you can then post in newsletters and stuff. Um, that gives you like the right things. Everything that that you'll great. To I just get so many families, especially yeah. when I'm having IEP meetings, asking me for resources yep. in the community um, yep. and things that are free. So so what our district does, I was saying earlier, my kids go to Cuyahoga Heights. So they're in this little, little tiny district, right? Like pre-K through 12th grade, there's under 900 students, um, which is like awing to me. Mm -hmm. But um, what they do is they actually send these home. So these get printed twice a year. So okay. they get, they come, um, we, we, our staff, let me rephrase, 40,000 of them come to my house, <laughs> not our staff, 40,000 come to my house. Um, and I get all of the neighborhood kids and we organize them and they get service hours. I take all the high schoolers in our neighborhood. They get their service hours and, um, we sort them all out and we give them to different school districts throughout uh, Cuyahoga and Lorain counties. And they come in packs of 25. Mm -hmm. So which is usually pretty decent for a class to be able to do one for mm -hmm. you know, the classroom. Um, and we, we bundle them all up and then our staff goes and delivers them. Like we have, and it's usually that week after Labor Day mm -hmm. that we deliver for the mm -hmm. fall one. Um, and then we deliver usually the second week in January. So that's when this one came out, the second week of January. Um, and then what we do is for the educators, what, the list I'll make sure I get you on is we do a monthly, like, hey, this is what we're having this month. Because this is a highlight, guys. We are doing um, over 100 programs this spring. On the website, you can see all Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so every month we do a, a newsletter thing that is easy. It's a PDF type thing that you can put in your newsletter. So our, my school district, they use S'more. Okay. So in our S'more emails, there's always a link to our website yep. in there for connecting for kids. And then a link to whatever the latest, mm -hmm. like in January, we don't do a monthly one. We just do the big one. Um, but then in February, it's like, hey, remember, here are the February things. You know, and so they switch out that link at the beginning of the month. Yeah. That's exactly what I would like to do. We can get permission mm -hmm. to yeah, do that. that right? That would awesome. be so great. Just I would love to. And then the other thing I want to leave with you, I'm not going to kind of, since it's on the front and back of these, but I brought you a bunch of these. So these are great to have at IEP meetings. At, in, I'm going to take one and I'll leave it. Um, so this is kind of that front and back of the newsletter I gave everyone. Kind of talks a little bit more about what the resources support and community are. But what we do is we give these to schools to have in their um, school psych office, school counselor's office, school social worker's office, few in the main office. Because you never know. It's not just kids who, who are on an IEP or who have a disability that need resources. Um, right now, we're averaging about, well, we're starting to get into the, oh, the coming. Um, big fall that we get. What am I gonna do with my kiddo? Um, but we average about 10 to 15 parent contacts um, a day right now. So, and when they come to us, 75% of those have a concern that's not diagnosed. Okay, so 75% of the families who come to us just have a concern. It might be that kiddo was punching a hole in the wall because the parents are getting divorced. It might be my kid will only eat beige food. We get that one a lot. <laughs> a lot. We get the kid will only eat beige food. Um, I always bring it up because I'm always like, it, we get it so much more than you would think. Um, we, since the pandemic, a big one that we get is the like two to three year old who speech is behind. You know, they're not sure where to go. Um, and we, we go over the whole steps with them. Have you talked to your pediatrician? If they're our school age, have you talked to school? If they're not, have you talked to help me grow? You know, we go through the whole plan with them. Um, and then one of the things I, I didn't kind of mention on here, but giftedness. We get a lot of phone calls too where, you know, my kid, I just don't know what to do. They're not sleeping. 
because they're so worried about the polar ice caps melting and what is going to happen to those polar bears? <laughs> you know, and I don't, and then we realize, oh, so have they been labeled as gifted yet <laughs> or not? You know, um, and we will help them with those type of resources too. So those are not the kids who are on the IPs, right? Like those are just your typical kid. I hate that word. Um, my older one is does not have a medical or IEP, but he has severe performance anxiety, like meaning sixth grade last year, he had A minus in art. And you would have thought his world was crumbling because he was not going to get into college with an A minus in sixth grade art. And I'm like, who is telling you this? Like, you are fine. You're fine. Um, you know, but we have resources for those school anxiety. So, yeah. Any other questions? For us? You said that um, everything's reported on these. A lot of our, the share and supports are not. Okay. Because those are very personal. Yep. Are those just on the website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah. you go to connectingforkids.org, mm -hmm. um, and at the top, there's a little, there's a couple different things I'll point out here. So I got to like, but our website. Um, at the top, there's one that says resources. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't go down there, there's one that says family education topics. Okay. That's all of the all of the podcasts okay. that we've recorded. And then they're broken down even more. Like anxiety, attention issues, food related issues, you know, school issues. And so it's broken down. And then not only is it a podcast, but you can also then follow along with the slides. Okay. And everything from all of our speakers. And then there's also other resources. You know? So if it is that um, picky eaters, it's one of the ones that we have. Going back to picky eaters, there's a whole plethora of books that you can use to help with the kiddos, who to reach out to, you know, um, different things. If it's something, we have one coming up that's talking about funding for summer camps. Um, and these are talking about, once again, the summer camps that are a little bit more inclusive. So not just your typical zoo camp. And that one is my, my daughter will never be able to go to a zoo camp. And it like, she hates that. Because at 10, 11 years old, she's still in pull-ups. You know, she's toilet independent. She makes it to the body, the potty of her poop. And she changes her own pull-up and everything, but they won't take her. She's got a pull-up. So, you know, these, we... The camps that will take her are not cheap by any means, not that zoo camp is, but, um, you know, so we have this whole thing on funding for different stuff. We just had a family call us um, about a month or so ago. Their kiddo um, needed hearing aids and their insurance said no. Insurance said no. They didn't have the amount of money that are, and hearing aids are not cheap, right? We have a whole list of special of funding sources for hearing devices because that's unfortunately a common occurrence. Mm -hmm. So all that's under resources on our website. So and then there's also a button on there if you don't want to give me your email address that says join us, and then you can click it yourself and put your email address in too. And I would just say I've been getting their email since I met um Sarah, one of Joellen's colleagues at an event back in the fall, you don't get inundated with it. Like it's not, it's not spammy. There's not a million emails and the conversations that I've had with Sarah, they, they really are so helpful and knowledgeable about so much. It really, I, it's a great resource and I really would love for people to take advantage of it and to let others know that this is out there because I mean, you look at the back and People think, I think generally when people think of this type of resource, they think only if my kid's on an IEP, but right. like, I know in our community, the adoption and the foster right. and like, it's, it's a big thing. So I just tell your, tell your friends that aren't here, like share this information. Cause I think it could be really life-changing to a lot of families. Well, and, and also the resource fair that we have coming up at Tri-C on the second, um, we're going to have so many great resources there that aren't disability specific. Um, you know, like you mentioned adoption, we have two different adoption places, adoption, foster care support coming, you know, that because it's a different, it's a totally different world. My sister adopted both of her kids. 
and she's in Northern Michigan as a pediatrician. And she's like, I didn't know how hard this was going to be without having other foster families around me mm -hmm. that, or adopted families fostering because she, she fostered that adopted her foster kids. So, um, you know, and that's something that I always say that we're really lucky to live in this area. I, I moved here, um, just over 11 years ago now. We actually moved from Kodiak, Alaska to be here. Um, I grew up in Alaska. Did you? Yeah. Uh, Anchorage mostly, but okay. my dad lived in, my dad, my parents were in Kodiak and I was like a little bit. Aw, I love Kodiak. But um, I'm actually hoping to run back up there. I say like run back up there this summer, but um, <laughs> I, I probably go more than your average person goes to Alaska, mm -hmm. but still, um, some of our good friends still live up there, so. But so we moved here from Alaska and then I was in Northern Michigan before that. So I've always been in these rural, not a lot of resources type places. So when my husband got orders here, we were both kind of like Cleveland. Like what? His original orders were for Honolulu. Like it took a minute to wrap my brain around we're not going to Honolulu. We're going to Cleveland. Okay. So and I kept telling him there's some reason. There's some reason we're going to Cleveland. I'm like, it's the closest we can get to both of our parents. At the time his were in central Illinois, mine were in northern Michigan. Closest the Coast Guard would send us was Cleveland. You know, um, so once we, we found out we were pregnant two days before we left Kodiak, mm -hmm. um, drove across country, newly pregnant. Don't mm -hmm. recommend. Mm -hmm. Also found out I was pregnant with my son and I drive to Alaska. So. Um, Alaska is a problem, really. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, my body's like, oh, you're going on a cross country trip. Let's get pregnant. Um, but uh, yeah, so we found out that my daughter had her genetic issues um, in utero still. And I looked at him and I said, Do you now question why we're here? I said, Because we have choices. We have medical choices here. I mean, Kodiak would have been like, Oh, heck no. You're, you're out of here. You're heading to Seattle. No, Honolulu would have sent us to LA and he would have had to still be working. I would have been far, far away. So we're very lucky to live in an area that has so many awesome resources. And, but you just, so many people don't know what you don't know, right? Like, and until you need those resources or are emerged in that life, whether it's a giftedness whether it's picky eating, whether it is a disability. You know, we luckily have a list of 425 local resources that cover at all the so. Thank you so Thank much. You much. Thank you so much. All right. So, right. so Heather, we will all right. pass the baton to you. Um. So... All right with everybody. I mean, I, I have slides, but I'd also, I kind of prefer more of a conversation. I'm sure you have lots of questions. Um, and one caveat is, I noticed this thing up there, so I moved it. Um, I'm probably not going to have all the answers for you today. This is the process, um, and we're working through it. So it's also an opportunity for me to sort of gauge where you're at, what's important to you, what are you thinking about? Um, what have we maybe not thought about yet that we need to have sort of on our radar? So please feel free to share and ask questions. Um, everybody knows we passed a pretty large bond issue in November. So we are renovating each one of our elementary schools um, two at a time. And we are also going to renovate Woodbury and turn it into our middle school. So our middle school will uh, be demolished at the end of this construction period, which can be anywhere from seven to 10 years based on supply chain, construction schedules, that kind of thing. So, and as of recently, as recently as January 26th, I wanna say the date was, uh, the district decided that we are going to accelerate this program, which I'm sure you guys all know, I just wanna sort of give us context of where we're at. So when we, if, what the acceleration means is that rather than our um, fifth graders coming back to the elementaries in 25, they're coming back this year. This year, so our fourth graders will be staying at Onaway, um, and Woodbury will be shut down 
for renovations. Full disclosure, I really hate the language of like Woodbury closing. I know that's what the district's using. I know that's what you're seeing on social media. It's not closing. We're renovating it. So I just I really hate that language because it seems really sad. And and there are some there are some sad things about Woodbury closing. Um, you know, we have teachers with incredible tenure there that have worked in teams forever. And it is sort of a brief a moment of grief for everybody. So that, that part is sad, but we are going to have a brand new wood. So. Um, this is a caveat that I'm glad that we have put in. So remember, as you've already seen, everything is tentative and subject to change. And we're doing our very best with it to keep, to keep you to be as transparent as we possibly can, which is sometimes messy and hard, but we are trying to keep you in the know as best we can doing things just like this. Um, unfortunately, um, little information on the side, all of the elementary schools have their PTO meetings on the same night. So um, mm -hmm. there's only five board members. And so we're trying really, really hard. So whatever you glean from this presentation tonight, please feel free to share with anybody. Or if they feel like they're not getting the information, we are always available. Uh, please. I mean, I sit down and have coffee with tons of people all the time. I, I'm happy to take phone calls whatever we can do to help with the information. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that most of you have this information, but this is just sort of a guideline of if your student, where your student is today and what their 20, most important, what their 25, 26, 27 timeline would be. I think the most important thing on this slide is the 26 and 27 where it says target move-in date. And I think that's important because the acceleration of Woodbury doesn't necessarily guarantee that we're going to be able to open it in time for the beginning of the 26-27 uh, school year. So it's important that we re recognize that we may need some flexibility. We will have a much clearer idea of that once we get through the summer um, and the demol demolition has begun at Woodbury, so we'll actually know sort of what we're facing down. And that will happen all through this process. When we get into our elementary schools, we will go through the exact same process. It's the same thing that happens in your house. You hire a contractor for, I don't know, your toilet got plugged up and they find asbestos in the wall and now you're three months in. So um, does anybody have any questions about sort of where your child is going to land based on the current schedule? So younger than grades currently, they won't be impacted. They just won't be going to the current middle school. They'll be going to Woodbury because it's renovated. Yeah. Yes. So the fourth grader today mm -hmm. will be here for fifth grade. Yes. Middle school for sixth grade. Yeah. Question mark for seventh. Grade. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. And middle school is uh, modular classrooms. Mm -hmm. So um, the sixth grade, and you'll see a timeline in a little bit, um, but. The sixth grade is going to be sort of its own unit over at the middle school, and the modular classrooms are going to be, all of that space is going to be assigned by, and you'll see the decision timeline next, it moves in March. Yes. So um, you can see here, this is the timeline, and I can share this too with you if you can see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, happy to. Um, so when we looked at this in January, so the first meeting in January as a board, we looked at this, and this is the same timeline that we had. Um, our concern was right in this area when we started talking about acceleration. So we had two teams, our K-5 through team and our 6-8 through eight team present and sort of tell us what would it take to get here. And so where we were at coming into the January 26th meeting was, did we meet our deadlines? And we sat with the same groups of people and were extremely impressed with the information that they shared with us not just around the material things like curriculum planning and um, moving of classrooms and classroom spaces over at the middle school and, and modular classrooms, but around the thoughtfulness that they had put into how does this impact our staff long-term? How do we think this impacts our students long-term? And what do we really think is best? Um, and I can be honest with you walking into the meeting uh, on January 26th, I was, I was sort of like, I don't know about acceleration. When I walked out of that meeting, I felt really confident it was the right thing to do. So um, fast forward to our meeting last week and our teams are actually um, up and above where they wanted to be before heading into March. Um, and you'll see a little bit more about that in a minute. 
So I, you probably have actually seen the rising student visits and family information nights have all been shared out already. Um, so we have an architect that the RFQ is request for qualifications. That's what that stands for. Was published on Friday, February 9th. Um, and will be selected by the end of April. And then um, the construction firm will be posted by the end of February. This The construction manager is something that I get a lot of questions about from uh, people that are really involved in facilities or architects. And so, I, but I think it's important for everybody to understand what a construction manager and construction manager at risk is. A construction manager at risk is sort of like a an outside manager for the entire project. So while the school has an operations director and an assistant operations director, a superintendent, a director of curriculum, a director of leadership, this person's sole position is to manage the project for us. So they keep tallies on all of the, the construction in our um, which is having lived through, been on the board when, when Fern, the Fernway fire happened, that service is invaluable for the number of moving parts that happens when you're in a construction project. So. Classroom learning spaces. I mentioned the modular classrooms will be installed at the middle school. I want to tell you, I want to give you the right number here. Okay, so six classrooms uh, will have restrooms in them and four of them will not, but they ha will have a, a walking space that's covered between the school. So there will be, the students will be protected going to and from the building, but, um, and they haven't decided which wing that's going on yet. And I'm sorry, did you say that the sixth graders will be there or you're deciding where the sixth graders will be? It is not, it is not been definitely decided the sixth graders are going to be there. In the original presentation, it sounded like that's probably what we were going to do. And now I think they're sort of thinking through what the sixth grade, because the sixth grade is going to be, fifth and sixth grade is going to be kept as departmentalized, which means team teaching. So what that looks like in terms of do the kids stay in a modular classroom all day or are they moving? And we want the sixth graders to be wholly separate from the seventh, eighth, and ninth graders. So more to come on that. Um, and then the district committee, that means an internal committee for the movement of learning spaces. So because that's going to be a very big deal come the end of the year, especially at Woodbury, to get all of our materials over to the middle school. And then we'll have to do it again at the end of construction. So we will have an internal committee advising that. I mentioned we have a K through five work group. That work group is chaired by the uh, principal, excuse me, at Mercer, Renisha Kimball. And then we have the six through eight work group, which, which is chaired by Eric Foreman. And each one of those includes faculty from all of the grade levels um, and multiple team members. We need like, like 12, 12 to 15 team members. Yeah. Um, they are regular in the meeting. In fact, I was over at the administration building uh, today for a meeting and our K through five work group was in the uh, large conference room. And as I mentioned, being ahead of the timeline, our draft professional learning plan has been developed and feedback is being collected. That goes, that, that is probably a question in this room tonight in terms of how do you manage what fifth grade looks like from what it looks like at Woodbury to what it looks like coming down to the elementary. That's what that address is actually what the expectation is going to be for our fifth grade teachers who are currently at Woodbury and the way that they're teaching now versus coming into the elementary school, being able to provide the primary years program, baccalaureate, class learning work, and still have departmentalized learning. So that is, it's a draft professional learning plan and then again, more to come, but we're ahead of the game on this. You've probably seen the school start end times, which I printed out and forgot to bring with me. But um, probably, I'm guessing in this room, most happy about the uh, earlier elementary school start time, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, exactly. I am. That, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So my, um, I have I have a, mm -hmm. a 19 year old and a 16 year old, but both of them went to Onaway, and when they got when they went here, I think class started at 8 15. Mm -hmm. So, um, not to say that I'm getting older. But um, music programming, this is, I just learned this right be, literally before I walked in here today. So music programming and Spanish, there is going to be an announcement hopefully by the end of the week on um, what this looks like. But uh, there are, in the last two weeks, there's been multiple meetings with our music staff and our curriculum staff to determine what that looks like. And then Spanish, I can tell you, is going to be single subject schedule. So that means like a special 
um, that your K through fourth graders are experiencing now. So, how is that different? For, how is that different from what the fifth graders get now? The fifth graders right now have a language carousel. So, um, the the, the fifth, rising fifth graders will not have the language carousel next year. They will just have Spanish. And then that will give us a year to decide whether or not we will continue to have the language carousel. There's different schools of thought on, on how powerful the carousel is and it's not. So that gives us a, sort of a year to figure out what that looks like because you can't offer the language carousel at an elementary school, probably, um, but you could offer it once they get to Whitberry. And is the carousel also just like one day a week? Away That's a good question. I don't actually know how frequently they're meeting with the carousel. I will find out for you. It's every other day. Every other day? Mm -hmm. Okay. They have a quarter of each of the four languages every other day. Okay. And I think the difference is that language is viewed differently in NYP than it is in PYP. Um, so we don't have language generally. A carousel, you don't have more than one choice usually. Um, and typically, in my experience, it's a in PYP, yeah, in PYP, yeah, it's much more like an exposure thing. Right? Yeah. MIP, there's like specific particular requirements an hour. Okay. So, and like I said, we should have an announcement on these two at the end of the week. I would expect there to be feedback about sort of the carousel, which I have no view on, and the like fact that kids will be getting less. Like, what are they getting instead of getting more? Like with learning. I will say though, like having been, so I'm not a parent, but I'm the IB coordinator at Woodbury. And so, like, um, I was going to say, Amy, you need full disclosure. The, well, <laughs> the language carousel is only a few years old. Um, at, oh, at Woodbury, it was not yeah. a thing until a few years ago. And the students continued with Mandarin, like they had had at the elementary mm -hmm. level yeah. um, in through fifth grade once a week. Uh, just until, one week. until just a few years ago. Okay. And then they were sort of choosing blindly their choice for sixth grade. Um, so it's not, there isn't like years and years of history of the kids. And our students only get Spanish 20 minutes a day. Yes. And this is not, this is a special, this is 50 minutes. And our kids only get it first through four. This would be kindergarten to four. So it would be 50 minutes. And it's 20 minutes a week, not 20 minutes. I mean, 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes a week. I'm sorry. That's but okay. yeah, so by the time. Wait a minute, like, the day actually is crazy. Yeah, by the time it gets started going, yeah. it feels like. It's a great idea, Heather. Take that back. 20 yeah, minutes a day. 20 minutes. I'm sitting here like, I need to move. The day is now 30 minutes longer. You've got time for it. I think that's what we just speak Spanish here. My name is Dora. I know. My son lives in Chicago. Um, okay, well, so that I'm just like thinking about like public perception information. So it sounds like maybe they'll have just as much language learning because it's a longer block than the one time. Yeah. Yes. Now, but and that's and that's why there isn't any official announcement yet because you have to because you also have to balance it with the other specials that the children have with PE and arts and so they're still they're still still working through that and making sure that the goal is that there's always value added, not anything taken away, like you said. Um, I do think one point I raised at the last board meeting, and I think it's important, um, especially when you have younger children, is that um, I ask that when we're making curriculum decisions, specifically like things around um, music and language, is that um, we're very intentional about what the long term consequences of the decision are, because in the case of Mandarin, um, and I, my family lived through this just this last in, in sophomore year of high school, because of when we started offering Mandarin. And then my daughter decided to, that was going to be her language. So she followed Mandarin all the way through to her sophomore year. In her sophomore year, she was taking Mandarin five in a classroom with students that were taking Mandarin three and four in the same classroom. And then when we planned for junior year, they said, I'm sorry, we don't have anything else to offer her. She can go to CCP um, or you know, a, a college campus, which is great, except that she's 16 and now, in the case of Spanish, there's much many more Spanish teachers readily available than there are Mandarin teachers. Um, it's a different circumstance, but that situation could present itself. So we need to be careful about how we offer things so that we can continue to offer the classes to our students as they get older. Same thing with with music. Um, you know, our band and um, orchestra and choir programs are amazing. Um, 
But we are also sort of at this roadblock where if a child wants to take music theory, which also happened um, in my in, in my older son, my son, when he went to go take AP music theory, there wasn't enough room for him to continue orchestra. So he had to stop taking orchestra in, in order to take AP music theory. So there's all kinds of trade-offs down the road that we have to be intentional about. But those are the kinds of questions that we need to ask. And I continually ask, by the way, I, I am under no illusions that 10 years from now, when we go to hopefully come back and say, we want to do the high school, that you will be able to appoint to probably 20 things that didn't go well. And that was not what the intention was. So there's always going to be unintended consequences, but we'll try to mitigate them. Um, this is, so this is a little bit of background on how the bond issuance has happened. So the OFCC, as you probably know, 37% match on the project of $128 million. Um, in order to access that, that money, we need to have $105 million, which is our part of the uh, project in the bank. So on the February 13th meeting, we discussed how we we're gonna finance the issuance of the bonds. This is the estimated schedule that we talked about during the campaign. And because of the accelerated timeline, and also because of some misunderstandings between the OFCC, Bond Council, administration, and the board, we ended up having to change how we're going to tranche the bonds. So this the difference comes in in twenty. Oh, this is the projector side. The difference comes in in twenty twenty seven, where rather than having a zero tranche, there's a two point two five and a two point three. That actually also ends the tax assessment, whereas here it rolled out. To 2036. So the ask is still the same. It's just an accelerated timeline. And what this slide does for you is it tells you exactly what the difference is in the ask per year. So you can see when you get to 27, the difference is $78 per 100K of house value or 80 in 2028. So that is the difference between what we talked about during the campaign and what we, what we, where we landed today. What's really even more important about this right now is that Cuyahoga County is going to do a reassessment of your property values in 24. And most likely it's going to be a super, super high increase on your property value, which is a good thing for the tax millage. Because the way that the law works in Ohio is when we assess taxes, whatever your house value is at that moment, that's where it stays. So when your house, when your house value goes up, we can't collect any more than what we said we were going to collect. So the millage will actually go lower. So in, in the end, over the 37 uh, year period, you actually save money because the tax valuation. I know. Yes. Right. Yes. So, so if you're paying a hundred dollars in taxes now today on whatever house value it is, your, your value of your house is, Next year, if your house goes up 20%, you're still only paying $100. We're not, you're not paying $120. Mm -hmm. so, good. It's good for us as, as property owners. It's terrible for schools, unfortunately, because that also forces us to go back on the ballot on the regular for operating. Because while our expenses increase with inflation, and operating levies are our teacher salaries, things like that. While our expenses increase, our revenue stays flat. So that's why Ohio schools, up, for the most part, are on the ballot every three to four years. Shaker hasn't been on up for an operating, a full operating levy in almost 11 years now. So this is what I was just talking about. The, also, the, additional, the interest income from uh, the accelerated schedule will also save the schools six to eight million dollars in, in our capital um, improvements fund, which we will then be able to put towards First of all, it's like a rainy day fund for any capital repairs, but also for the second phase of the project, we're already $68 million ahead, um, depending on interest rates. So this is what I just talked about. And then of course the acceleration schedule forces the issuance to come a little bit quicker. I know that's a lot. Can they answer questions on that? So this is our communication and engagement schedule or, or information about it. Um, internal stakeholders, union leadership, leadership teams and staff meetings, um, 
uh, staff survey for placement of conferences that was primarily for Woodbury, um, PTO, students and others, facility, facilities advisory committee. I actually sit on that committee. That committee has about 30 people in it um, and is architects, sustainability folks, um, really uh, incredibly um, valuable in this so far. Uh, I'm sure you've seen Dr. Glasner has regular webinars. The next one comes up next week. It's always at noon, but it's also recorded. So, um, and they just updated the facilities landing page on the website. So you can access all of those. Um, and then the weekly emails and the FAQs that are on the webpage that I just talked about. That's it. What kinds of questions can I answer? Okay, they're back on, and maybe you said this, what will it look like with the fifth grade here? Like there will be modular classrooms here at Onaway or we're no. using everyone? In no, no. So the, the, all of the elementaries, they, the district has studied all of the elementaries. There's enough room for all of the fifth graders at all of the elementary schools. And even at Fernway, we had originally said that we might have to put a modular unit there at Fernway. We're not going to have to do that. Um, so the only place that modular units are going to be is at the middle school. Is the, I heard something about like they thought that preschool could move, so that'd be space for fifth graders, but preschool can't move yet. So, but there's still space for the fifth graders. That is so my understanding, because I know that preschool is not moving until um, August of 25. So, mm -hmm. but I will look further into that and get you a better answer. There, There's room. I had to, I had to spend a week on that. Uh, but there's room. Um, one of the things that we do have um, as a benefit here, although preschool does use nine rooms in Onaway and three offices, is our lower level that was used when when we had its fire has been mostly used for related services. Um, and some of our related service providers aren't just here all the time. Like they service other places, maybe they have their home base here. So some of those people might be relocated. Um, and then we can preschool as a department more of it, more of their department down to the lower level, recognizing that in their rooms they generally have uh, 10 to 12 kids, 2.5 hours a day. Um, and my goal is to keep the three, you know, on the main floor and together um, so that if they do, you know, the teachers need to share, collaborate, departmentalize, they will be close together and to keep this upstairs intact as it is as a K-4. So um, that's what I've been working on. And our build, building leadership team works with me on that. Um, and we're two goals, keep fifth grade classes together as a unit and keep our single subjects um, off the carts so that we can protect the quality of our arts, um, recognizing that many of our children that is you know, and also our arts department will now see over 500 kids. So you don't want someone who has to work with that many children to have to do it on the card. Um, we will have over 500 children at Onaway next year with the preschool here. But the building is built to actually hold way more than that. Um, we, you know, I know some of you were here when E.D. Davis was here. Uh, they had over 500 children of Onaway in those days. That's not counting preschool. That's just K-4. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it definitely can hold that many, but we just want to make sure that it's operating smoothly and the school culture works and it makes sense developmentally. Everybody can be in an area and do their job in an appropriate way. <laughs> Um, so, but the building leadership um, is a part of that. Jen Lover is on that committee with me and it's been working really well. And I have to say that I was one of those people that was like, oh my gosh, we cannot do this as fast. Um, but the team at the district level, the PYP committee has been so transparent and so good at communicating and taking feedback from each building. And the teachers on my committee here, the, the leadership team have just been so positive and um, really trying to just, you know, work together in recognizing that it's going fast, but they're sticking to the timeline. Everything that they said would be done has been done when they said it was going to be done. So it's been really nice. Yeah. I think, um, one of the things that I heard at the board meeting, uh, at the end of January from teachers was, um, this sense of like, 
well, what, what would be worse to keep us in limbo for two years and not know where we're going, what it looks like, or to get it done um, within reason, right? Like you can't ask a fifth grade teacher to rewrite their entire lesson plan to be ready for PYP at the elementary school in one year. And that's fair. But listening to that aspect of it, I was like, yeah. I wouldn't want to be sitting there for two years trying to figure out what does my job look like and how does that impact the experience that our kids are having. And I will tell you that it's really uh, been, I didn't know how the kids would take it. So my concern is always the kids. Yes. And um, I went around, they asked me to come talk, and one of the classes invited me back, we, we have more questions for you. Um, but they're so excited. Like they're like, I mean, and you might know differently of pocket of people that maybe feel differently, but overall, as a tone of my fourth grade right now, um, yeah, they've said things like, Oh, I was really looking for, oh, a lot of them have a really good relationship with Mr. Corbin. So that's been their number one thing. Some of them they wanted to be with me. I'm like, that but that's personal. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think that you know, you're always excited for that next level, but there's also for some of them this anxiety. And that this feeling of, I may not be ready yet. And so I love on away, or I love, or or I'm going to get, oh, I wonder who I'm going to get. Like, they they see that on is going to be a little bit different next year. It's not going to be just the people here. Oh, I wonder who the teachers will be. I wonder where the room will be. A little bit of excitement. So I've, you know, said to the adults, like, that's really good. That we need to protect and make sure they're okay. And, like, if they're yes. excited, let's go with that and let's keep them feeling because a lot of change for some kids can be a lot in, in the anxiety of all of it and then just worrying about, you know, how it's going to be and what it is going like. So, um, but yeah, the kids have been, and I just keep going in. When they ask me to come in and talk or ask questions, yep, I come in. So, I'll come in too. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. They do. They love the I question, love the Q&A. They like set into, I did a chair. Dr. DeLeo's class is the last one. And they, you know, uh, write out their little questions like it's a talk show. <laughs> <laughs> but they are. We can mock you up a mic. Right. <laughs> well, I have to tell you today it was kindergarten. Well, one, two of the questions were hundred. She don't miss me. <laughs> but uh, one of the kids did say, I, they asked the, the teacher said, what? 100 things that the principal does all the time or says all the time and one of them said she walks around with a microphone <laughs> 100 days um but yeah i think that the kids are excited for the most part i think there are some you know kids that were like oh, bummer but for the most part well i'm happy that so fourth graders are going to they're not doing exhibition but they're doing a capstone project mm -hmm. so i think that that was um a, a stroke of genius actually to i go to all the exhibitions at the buildings and i I was kind of like, um, and so Jada Anaway's PTO because at the principal's meeting, um, they said, um, well, we could just let them do what the other grades already do, and everyone, all the principals, was like, what do the other grades do? And Dr. Evans goes, you know, the IB nights, they can just do an IB night for fourth grade, and everyone's like, IB night. I'm like. Yeah, that's my building. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm proud of PTO. They started last year. They, yeah, because I was the like, arts, wait, what's IB? After the arts, um, I guess it's oh, yeah, art show or art people. thing that you guys did at the end of the year. Okay. They art. It was like instead of a spring open house, it was an evening for the arts. To so celebrate yeah. the IB. Yeah, there was like music level. performances and artwork in the hallways and the classrooms were open and they were the special teachers really did the heavy lifting and, and it, was it great. really was wonderful and it really gave all those kiddos a chance to highlight all those approaches to learning the atl skills that we worked so hard on to prepare them for the culminating activity of exhibition so that's what dr evans was like well wouldn't we just do an IB night for fourth grade and then someone said oh yeah like a capstone and then you know it was just that whole idea of like what are the positives what can we yeah. how can we make this great for kids and also the first fifth grade like celebrating the first fifth grade class ever to be in the building well, yeah. mm -hmm. but yeah. and then the first fifth grade class to be class out of the building yeah. so um yes and also just i i my third personal anecdote for the night. But um, when my son was in fourth grade and did his exhibition here in Conway, um, very early on in the summer, I have one of my best friends from high school uh, is works with the State Department. So her child had always 
attended uh, the American schools, which are all IB all over the world. Um, so they came to visit and Gavin was a year older than my son, his fifth grader, and he had just done an exhibition. So they decided to do their exhibitions for the parent. Um, and I could not believe the difference in a fifth grade fifth grader's exhibition to my four. I was like, and I knew then that fifth grade was actually supposed to be when exhibition happens, but we were doing it in fourth grade because that's how our grades were banded. But when they stood up, I was like, wow, that's significantly better than just so are they not doing fourth grade I mean, I guess, is that what I'm hearing? They're doing a capstone project. Oh, okay. That's what I got. Yes. Okay. But it's going to be like the other great IB nights? Um, they're working on the details of it. It sounds like there it'll be a little bit different. They're gonna have um a little bit more focus on that planner that they would have had to present yeah. on. Should they have to? So they they've been in contact, the IB coordinators have been working with actual, you know, folks from IB because it really is like told to us how it has to be. Sure. And um, we have to cover that unit. And, you know, I think it'll it'll be uh, maybe different in some ways in the different building, but we met PTO and chair and then BLT had some ideas. And then Denise, our IB coordinator said yeah. the IB, the coordinators all got together and kind of mapped out and she's going to share what their decisions were with the team because they had their meeting was the last one who hadn't heard back from her yet. But it does sound like it'll be similar to that, but it's just going to be fourth grade and it'll have a uh, focus on that planner that they did it. And Dora, just to interject, in case you don't know, BLT is the building leadership team. Oh, thank you. So yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And a delicious sandwich. And, and, and a delicious sandwich. Um, uh, other questions? Well, I was, oh, oh go ahead, Julia. Real quick, too, I think we may not know this yet, but okay. any idea when on a way will be vacated for running? No, we have okay. not gone through the order. Yes, okay. I would love to answer that question for you. Okay. Um, but the, the actual answer is once we hire the architect, they will do an assessment of the buildings and they'll recommend which one. So as soon as we have that architect on staff, then we will have a much better idea. But yes, I would like to answer that question. Yes. The teachers asked Dr. Glass or that we came. And he's like, well, we won't ask Mrs. Bechtel because I was like, I want to go last. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, yeah, who wouldn't want to go last? Okay. No, because then you benefit from whatever everything they learn. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I just also like am so like this whole transition over. I'm like, oh, but um, one of the other teachers wanted to go last too because they wanted to retire with their original oh, and they wanted to end here. Um, but he did think he said he goes it's all based on what the architects yeah. say because it's really about which buildings need it, like like for no right. And it'll, and it'll, it will have to do with cost too. Um, and two buildings will go at a time. Two buildings at a time. So yeah. they have to look at the enrollment of those two buildings and think about who can fit. And, yes. You know, so there's a lot of decisions. It's not just like who wants to go. <laughs> As a plug for the those of us who live directly across the street from the school. <laughs> yeah. In between the construction chaos, yeah, right between Woodbury <laughs> and uh, I'm by the number of people that feel that way that are in this neighborhood. Because when we were two two years ago, when uh, when we did 50 coffees, right, or 50 or 60, Dr. Glassner on the board, and we did three right around the oval, and all of them had like 30 or 40 people there, and everybody remembered. You can't believe this. They actually remembered the construction of the cafeteria at the high school and what a disruption it was with traffic. And so they were like, no, that's that's why we would vote against it because it's so disruptive from the traffic standpoint. Yeah, totally makes sense. Yeah, I have had these people ask me, and I, don't, I wasn't here, obviously, I don't know. Will the road be yeah. like closed off? Will can you will you be able to park it? Will we still have a lot? Like they're really Good worried questions. about where the fencing and things will be. I'm like, you don't have that kind of stuff yet. But no, people soon are, people are anxious about it. I can tell. Yeah. I and mean, probably it's because they lived through other stuff. Yeah, yeah. the mice in the so Heather I was going to add too I don't know if it's on any of the fourth grade parents minds here but it has come up in like PTO council meetings and stuff of fourth graders this year's fourth graders being some parents feel that their child is going to be very disappointed that there won't be I love that face Sorry. <laughs> I agree <laughs> uh, that's on the recording um 
<laughs> that their kids are going to be disappointed that they don't have a clap out or what have you. My understanding is, is building leadership is talking about that celebratory stuff. One thing that had been floated um, at one of the PTO council meetings is like pushing for like a high five ceremony because they're moving up to fifth grade and yep. kind of, you know, but I, the intention is very much to still celebrate yeah. the fourth Absolutely. graders. There's so so much fun stuff at the end of we do grade. So exactly. Much. Exactly. So I just I'm trying to like if that's a concern or that's any of your friends' concerns. No, I think it's super yeah. important. Like, canceling, like I yeah. work with fourth graders. So yeah. we're not canceling anything. Jen's driving that. the fun bus. Yeah. 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 Right. That's next year, right? That's like they're gonna be here for like, fifth grade. Like, like, it's a bit out when they're actually going. Out. I mean, it's not just a crazy. I mean, there's a million different ways to do it, right? Like, it has to be like the glass half full, like, yeah. like the whole idea of like first, first fifth graders. So, like, when they leave the building this year, like they're the first rising fifth grade class. We haven't had. Year. I mean, I haven't had any. I've had a lot of emails. So I have not had anyone question it on the way the chance of a clap out being gone. Mm -hmm. Um, it, I mean. It kind of makes sense you clap out when you're leaving um, the building for good. But we have decided as a team, we are not, we we would do fun stuff no matter what. Like, we're still going to have our portrait picnic. We're still going to do kind of fun things that we do because it's the end of that school year with that teacher in that group of class. And that always is something worth celebrating and, and ending on a fun note. But yeah, as far as like clapping you out, that's a tradition that symbolizes exiting the elementary yeah. school. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, I'm just going off the top here, but I'm, I'm also the chair of senior class out. So like, maybe you just need something with the fourth graders escorting the seniors through the school. We are still yeah. doing seniors. Our seniors, right. that date's already been put down. Yep. yep, we're still doing our seniors. We're super excited. And yeah, we could do something fun. <laughs> I'm always a proponent for making that day. <laughs> Seven years and running. Yeah. Seven years and running. Wow. And I hadn't personally heard a lot at Onaway, but those were concerns that were raised. No, thank so you. if we are talking about yes. those concerns, please help to. Is the other building is the pointers. That's the fun stuff we do need. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's none of the same. So I don't know if they can walk the horseshoe lake that way. Just see <laughs> Boulevard, maybe. Right. <laughs> We'll share. They should. Uh, well, you know, it would be a good celebration. Or has it already been decided whether the fifth graders will have an instrument, or is it not? So, so that the, the music that we had a music announcement on, uh, hopefully this Friday, but oh. delayed. Please excuse me, but it is coming shortly. Oh, okay. And it will specifically talk about what happens for fifth graders with music. Okay. okay. Yes. We we're just tying up some loose ends. Yeah. And then is fifth grade, are we moving classrooms like at Woodbury or will they be, do we um, know the answer to that? So it's going to be compartmentalized. So it's still going to be team taught, okay. but they're still going to have specials. Okay. Um, so and then there is, else. so I think that they're working out sort of the, how the subjects lay out. Yes. So they may, they may change class. Oh, like we don't know the details. Yeah. Of that. If we do know that there will be a teacher who will teach science, there will be a teacher right. who will teach um, math. They will specialize in their subject. So as don't know far how. as if the kids are going to move the room or the teacher yeah. is going to move, it might depend on the building. Like here, I can say we're trying hard to keep the rooms close together yeah. and in as a little department. Yeah. But logistically, like I can't yeah. say that that will happen at all of the buildings. So but they'll have single subject teachers. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll have other single subjects and they'll have teachers that are specializing in their subject. And right. that's what. And then there'll be part of those teams to, to do sort of the IB element of interdisciplinary. Yeah, okay. I heard that, you know, right now they have four main teachers that they circle through, that there might be some instances where there's one teacher who does math and science and maybe one teacher who does. Correct. I, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. There's and one teacher who will do two subjects. Okay. And then right. we'll do one. And, and some of that is also through this, the staff survey too, sort of like. Where so where you want to land? Sure. What so? Because a lot of our Woodbury teachers are um, licensed in, in multiple grades and subjects, uh -huh. so that's why the staff survey was so important too. Mm -hmm. They were allowed to say like what their first choice was, yeah. what they you know they really tried to honor where the staff wanted to go, what they wanted to teach. I do have a couple of online questions. Oh, okay. Um, so just to clarify, Woodbury will be the first two years of construction. And then the renovation of the elementary schools will begin two at a time. Correct? 
Correct. Um, Though the two Woodbury two years is. It could be a worst case scenario. What the, yes. Okay. So yes, 26. I have to pull up the slide again. Two to the <laughs> Yeah. There you go. So yeah, this is to say 26, 27. That's that's the best hope for Woodbury. And then 27, 28. Next. Do you know what year Woodbury was expanded? I don't know, but I can find out for you. Oh. Um, and then, and I think, I think I actually kind of know the answer to this one. Um, but Heather, any word on what is happening with the high school? Was that included in this bond, or will that be a separate budget? And I, I think I know the answer right, which is that's going to be probably at least ten years down the road, and it's a separate. Yeah, so the the long range facilities plan is a two seg is in two segments. The first segment is what you voted on in November. The high school is part of the long range facilities plan, but it was not included in the bond issue. So when we finish all of the construction on the elementary and Woodbury and demolish the middle school, then we will come back to the voters and say, "Okay, we're ready for phase two. Are you ready for phase two? And it depends on what you say. <laughs> so it's a totally separate vote. Is it possible that the high school could end up where the middle school is at? Or that they're tied to the idea of having it on the middle? Nothing is carved in stone. Um, but the thing about the OFCC is when you once you uh, give them the schematic of what the long-range facility plan is, because we did do it in two different segments, mm -hmm. we could we do have options there. Like we could we could say, oh, we decided we're going to do it over there. The only the the negative ramification is that then they they have to come back and they have to do a whole new enrollment analysis, which could change the match that they give us, um, but just based on enrollment. The reason why we had two segments but one out one whole plan is because that guaranteed the thirty seven percent match, regardless of the two different um, issues on the ballot. Yeah. However, if we change what we said we were going to do, then they have they have the option to come back and do an enrollment analysis, and they could change based on so basically yeah. like what their contribution per student yeah is to change. So, but we do have flexibility. Yeah. Is there a chance that that second segment bond issue could come up earlier from the standpoint of like get the vote, get it going, get the planning, so that as soon as one construction project is over, the next could potentially start it has then those of us would be a little I mean it would have to be going have... it would have to be going really really well and oh. you guys would have to be really really excited about <laughs> it I mean this was this was not an easy sell like I, I, nobody thought it was going to be 60 40 on, on that day in November so I mean it was a tough campaign so and we are a highly taxed um, community so I mean it could be but I mean, you guys would have to be really fired up <laughs> um, is the, the anticipation like that the two elementary schools at a time that that takes about two years? -ish? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys for having me. I'm going to apologize that I didn't bring business cards, but you can find me on the website um, or just probably by the number of emails that you received. You can probably just type my email address in. This, but uh, I am available anytime. Happy to, and if you want, like, if you wanted to have, like, something at your house and have people over, like, whatever we can do to talk to as many people as possible, as often as possible, we're happy to do it. So, thank you so much, Heather. Yeah, yeah of course. Thank, thank you, you for having me. Oh, okay. What is your email? Okay, so be email, yep, under slash D. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry, my cards are down. That's okay. I'm going to come to the ballot. Yeah, I'm going to be on the ballot. All right, I didn't worry. I'm going to be on the ballot. Thank you, everybody. This concludes our meeting. Yeah, we have a real question. I'm going to be presenting to be sure for all of them. Yeah.